Blue, tranquil, a world away from Ukraine's front lines. We headed out to where Russia may be filling its war chest to a record high. Crude oil tankers, sometimes engaged in opaque, secretive transfers. These two, under sanctions busting suspicions in the past. The big one, from Russia's Black Sea coast, transferring crude to the smaller one, which also came from Russia. Out here, you get a feeling of how hard it is to keep track of all of this. Just transfers occurring out here in the blue expanse. Massive trade of billions of dollars of oil, some of which ends up helping the Kremlin fund its war. Tens of millions of barrels of crude likely transferred like this last year. And where it ends up, often unclear, which is the point. That's probably above 60 million barrels that are being transferred in the middle of the ocean purposefully. So you really needed to have a reason because it's much easier not to do that. These two have a messy past, said the shipping monitor that led us to them. The larger tanker that you guys saw was actually owned by a large company that bought a lot of these tankers uh, when Russian sanctions came in, right? And so they've been heavily associated with what we call the dark fleet, which is these tankers that are servicing Russia, Iran, Venezuela, and other sort of sanctions concerns. So the smaller one actually has an interesting history itself. It was once owned by a sanctioned person. Russia is richer than ever before. Last year's budget was $320 billion. About a third of which spent on its invasion of Ukraine. Sanctions were meant to dent oil paying for war. But instead, India has stepped in and is now buying 13 times more Russian crude oil than before the war. Worth $37 billion last year, says one estimate exclusively given to CNN. India buying Russian crude isn't sanctioned, but is buying so much, Russia might need to dodge some sanctions to ship it all. We asked an artificial intelligence firm, Winwood, to analyse all global shipping last year for direct shipments between Russia and India, and they found a huge 588. A separate analysis by Polestar Global for CNN revealed over 200 other ships that left Russia last year and did a ship-to-ship -ship transfer off the Greek coast to another boat that then went on to India. Ship-to-ship -ship transfers are done legally, but they're also used as an illicit tactic to evade sanctions, to sort of try and confuse the authorities as to where this oil is coming from and who's buying it at the end of the day. India says these shipments fuel its economy without raising global prices by competing with the West for Middle Eastern oil. But there's a complication for the West here as India refines the oil and sells those products on. And the biggest buyer of products from Russian crude last year, according to exclusive new data obtained by CNN, the United States, over a billion dollars worth from India. Way more if you add what US allies, also imposing sanctions on Russia, also import. So we've seen an increase in um, 2023 of 44% of oil products that are being made from Russian crude oil flowing into those countries that impose sanctions on Russia, such as the US, UK and EU. But Russia's even on the make from the refining. This Indian port and refinery, Vadinar, sent an estimated $50 million of refined products to the US last year. And guess who owns nearly half of it? Rosneft the Russian state oil giant enriching the Kremlin. Putin earning money on the crude, probably the shipping, but also the refining and the resale. Really, you're talking about something which is amazingly lucrative, and therefore the temptation to do that as a person or as a company is absolutely huge for the traders. And they could just make 10, 20, 30, 40 million within four or five months. I'm not sure there's any other opportunity in the world to do that, and there is. Please let me know what. An opaque chain of billions, risking Moscow having unlimited funds for its wars. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, London. En el otro tema, eh, digamos, eh, sí es cierto que Brasil votó para deplorar las acciones de Rusia en Ucrania en, en la Asamblea General de la ONU, 
pero en honor a la verdad, la mayoría de países de América Latina no dieron ni un solo paso más allá de deplorar o condenar en, en, en foros diplomáticos. Eh, por lo menos Brasil no ha intentado enviar, eh, digamos, armas de fabricación rusa a, a Ucrania, porque ya vemos lo que eso puede implicar cuando lo intentó hacer eh, Ecuador, pero es cierto que eh, el discurso de, de, de Lula es bastante ambiguo, sobre todo porque creo, y ahí tiene un punto en común con el gobierno ruso, creo que él piensa que lo deseable a futuro en términos del de, eh, orden internacional es un orden multipolar, eh, que en eso está de acuerdo con eh, Rusia y que quien se opone a esa posibilidad para mantener una posición de primacía en la política internacional es Estados Unidos. A судьбе Кузьминова говорят спокойно и уверенно. Приказ уже получен, а его выполнение вопрос времени. An eerie warning. Just months before police cordoned off this crime scene. A Russian state media journalist claiming last October that Russian special forces were seeking to retaliate against helicopter pilot Maxim Kuzminov, who defected to Ukraine last year. Kuzminov, now discovered, fatally shot in Spain, Ukrainian defense intelligence sources confirmed to CNN. His body found in a parking garage, according to Spanish authorities. Asked whether Russia had any knowledge of the death, Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said Moscow had no information on the matter at all, despite Russia's foreign intelligence chief speaking indirectly, saying that Kuzminov became a moral corpse the moment he'd planned his, quote, terrible crime. The crime in question, a daring operation last September that saw him fly his helicopter across the Russian border and into Ukraine. A decision Kuzminov explained to journalists just after arriving in Kyiv. If I had one question, why would my beloved homeland need such a war? I went to church, I lit candles with one wish that it would end as soon as possible. I realized that this is evil horror and crime. Any war is a crime. Maxim Kuzminov said the trip took six months to plan. Then, once out of Russia, he used his voice to encourage more of his countrymen to do the same. Of course, if you commit what I have committed, you will not regret at all. You will be provided for with everything for the rest of your life. You will be offered jobs everywhere, everywhere you would want and whatever you would want to do. You will discover a world of colors for yourself. That world of colors, however, cast in the Kremlin's shadow. The warnings on state television reminding dissidents that Moscow's grip extends far beyond Russia's borders. Melissa Bell, CNN, Paris. Placed in handcuffs with a ski cap pulled over her eyes, led into detention. This is Vladimir Putin's latest high-profile prisoner. A U.S. official tells CNN this is Ksenia Karolina, a 33-year-old ballerina from L.A., a U.S.-Russian dual citizen, arrested in Russia on charges of treason. Her employer says all she did was allegedly donate $51.80 to a Ukrainian charity in the U.S. Welcome to the world of, of hostage terrorism and uh, Vladimir Putin style. Russia's Federal Security Service says that while in the U.S., Karolina took part in, quote, public actions to support the Kyiv regime. How would Russian intelligence know if she donated less than $52 to a charity? This person has not only Russian citizenship, but also has friends and family back in Russia. They are able to monitor email activity, telephone activity, all the different powers that any state has to basically conduct espionage on their own citizens or whoever they like. Carolina's employer, a spa in Beverly Hills, says Carolina has been, quote, wrongly accused and that she was in Russia to visit her 90-year-old grandmother, her parents, and younger sister. Carolina became a U.S. citizen in 2021. A U.S. official says she entered Russia on January 2nd, and the U.S. learned of her arrest on February 8th. 
Analysts say Carolina's status as a dual citizen may work against her because the Russians won't recognize the U.S. portion of her citizenship. The Russians simply consider this person a Russian citizen and don't feel that they need to do anything further uh, in terms of granting access to, to guarantee that person's well-being. News of Carolina's arrest comes just after a Russian court upheld the extended detention of American Evan Gershkovich, a reporter for the Wall Street Journal, held on charges of espionage, which he and his employer deny. Former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan is also imprisoned in Russia on espionage charges, which he vehemently denies. It's gotten to the point where the White House is telling Americans in Russia to leave now, and the State Department warns. If you were considering travel to Russia for any reason, do not do it. I don't think we can say that any more clearly. Just how dangerous is it for an American in Russia right now? You have a target on your back. Now Americans are being viewed as bargaining chips by terrorist organizations and terrorist regimes like Putin. The problem with the U.S. trying to bargain with Putin for the release of Ksenia Karolina, Evan Gershkovich, or Paul Whelan is that the U.S. doesn't really have any high-level Russian spies in its custody and has had to approach other countries around the world to see if they can help package someone in a trade. One Russian who Putin really wants back, Vadim Krasikov, a former colonel in Russia's intelligence services, serving a life sentence in Germany for murdering a former Chechen fighter there. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington.